looking for a shadow. Okay, we're, I guess we're going to cut to some B-roll while we go get situated on the couch. Works for me. couldn't make it tonight. He's in Homer, Alaska. Uh, we found this out uh, maybe 20 minutes before we went on. If that, 15. Anyway, hi, Steve. If you're, if you're, if you're watching up there in Homer, <laughs> have fun up there. Huh? <laughs> um, Trix. Hey. Uh, what are we, uh, this is Trixie Garcia. Hi. The youngest of the Garcia. Uh, well, we have one younger. We Keelan. Have one younger? Keelan is younger. Oh, absolutely. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. See. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so wrong again. Let me just say I'm relieved Parrish isn't here. <laughs> 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 Love him, but uh, that was another element. Too much of a Too good thing. Too much of a good thing. <laughs> uh, I've heard that old saying. I never knew what it meant. Yeah, so we're, we've got this symphony coming to town. We're really excited about it. Right. Yeah, well, here we are celebrating another birthday of Jerry's and getting together and you know, playing the music and extending the family and watching we like Warren this? tear it up. It's been doing it sure has been fun. It's been amazing. It's been really, really, really special. Well, so how many, how many gigs have you done so far? Last night at Red Rocks was number six. Number six. And you do how many tunes in a given night? I think around 15. Uh, we divided the arrangement duties up among three different arrangers, and all told, I think we did 21, 22 arrangements. And so uh, tomorrow and the next night, I'm hoping to play every song over the two nights if we can 
make it right. work out that way. Now, who's connect, conducted tomorrow night? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, Michael Tilson Thomas. Really? That's, I mean, that's, uh, I could be wrong. I was once already today. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I was, too. <laughs> you know, that's what uh, my, my uh, that's, what, that's what my knowledge is, but I've, I've learned not to rely on that. Right. It's, either, it's either him or Sarah Hicks. Either way, we're blessed. But we, it's, yeah. Either way, it's it shows you what I know. Well. It's like, right? Yeah. You just, I'm somebody, just wrong for the ride. Somebody slaps you on the back yeah. and says, "Go." You know, it's a <laughs> showtime. <laughs> yeah, I know that one. Well, hell, now, you know, I, I can't wait to get back in, to my little project, but uh, that'll be next year sometime. Have you? Have you do you do you have you have sections where you you stretch the band out? Do you have se you have sections where you stretch the orchestra out as well? Yeah, what I've been uh, telling people in, in uh, interviews and stuff is that there's three ways that we honor the spirit of improvisation. Because when, when I was first approached about doing this, I thought it was an amazing idea. But what I didn't want to do was just to have symphonic interpretations of the music. I thought, if we're going to do this, then let's also try and keep some of the spirit of how the music was played right. as opposed to just how it was written. And so the ways that we came up with were one which is the most obvious, which is sometimes the symphony's playing an orchestrated piece and myself and Jeff Seip and, and Lincoln Schleifer uh, are improvising on top of it. Uh, other times the symphony bows out and we just go into improv land for a few minutes and then upon cue bring the symphony back in. But one of the most unique things, and it doesn't happen terribly often, but uh, the way the show opens is with this version of, of Dark Star. It's just an excerpt and I sent a tape to Stephen Bernstein, our friend who's one of the arrangers, of a tape of you guys in 1968. Mm -hmm. and he took a four or five minute segment of you guys just improving and orchestrated it. So everything you play, everything Jerry plays, everything Phil plays, all the keyboard stuff, it's all kind of uh, assigned to different right, symphonic right, right, right. pieces. Yeah. So you're hearing what was originally spontaneous composition and now it's orchestration and that's the way the show opens and then uh, we segue from that into us jamming on a little bit of Dark Star, which segues into a little bit, uh, or a, a nice long version of Birdsong. And the version of Birdsong that we chose, or, or that I chose, was a version with Branford sitting in with you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, that was great. I used that, I as, that a, well. as a template and sent it to Stephen as well. So a lot of the orchestration is not only you guys improving, but Branford's improv as well. And hearing that stuff uh, connected with a, a symphonic arrangement is just really, really unique. I don't think I've ever heard anything quite like it. Yeah, you know, the uh, the whole reason, or a big reason at least, for doing this kind of thing is to, you know, to, just to hear the music, of course, uh, in another, in another setting, and all yeah. that. Yeah. But also, um, classical music is kind of in a funk these days. I mean, it was going big. Yeah. It was going strong back in the '60s when uh, when the when the day got together, and then um, over the over the decades, it, it fell into a funk and. and uh, you know, only old people would go, and the old people only wanted to hear, you know, the Romantic era or, uh, or, you know, the, the, the stuff that they play on the radio that they call classical music, which is all Baroque, real boxy, real predictable, and uh, and that's what people think of as uh, as classical music when actually classical music, I mean, Bach, uh, uh, Beethoven. Uh, uh, bar talk. All those guys were were borrowing stuff that they heard from fiddle players and and uh, and you know basically folk music, right? Or or jazz or whatever that they were listening to, and and arranging it 
big, making it big. And, and other regional music from a, from right. a different part of the world, right. taking that influence, and if somebody goes, oh, wow, how unique. Well, it's because they were taking something that wasn't kind of their domain. Right. You know. The, and, this, this ought to sh shake things up a yeah, little bit. And it was, it was the same with... Gershwin and, and Irving Berlin and, right, and people, the, the, the pop guys. writers, the, the, the stuff that really shook them up and turned some heads was the stuff where they would take Egyptian music or like Russian lullaby and stuff like right. that and incorporate melodies or what they called back then Negro spirituals or right, whatever right. and incorporate that into a fancy piece, you know. And, you know, uh, this, the avant-garde stuff is cool if if you study this kind of music and you appreciate you can appreciate it, but it leaves most people it goes right over most people's heads. Uh, you know, modern what, what what they call modern classical music, you know, goes mo right over most people's heads. They they just can't get a handle on it. It's too too out there. You know, twelve tone music and that kind of stuff. And so. Part of the, uh, it, it at least occurs to me that part of the effort here, uh, part of the endeavor is to infuse some more other traditions into, into classical music and see what shakes out. And uh, yeah. one of the things that we're doing uh, with, 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 my, uh, with my piece um, is we're going to try to get the, the orchestra to, to actually uh, innovate a little bit or, or, or Improvise, you know, play, yeah, play out of their heads. So we'll give them, um, we'll give the section leaders uh, a few bars, you know, that thirty-two bars. I want you to build. Now, uh, we're going to start with this riff. It'll advance to you guys break off. You know, the the cellos keep on that riff. The violas and, and the violins go uh, uh, go this against that. Uh, we're going to get uh, polyrhythmic here. And then, uh, and then we're going to bring them, bring in some brass, and you guys. That's one way to do it. And we'll have okay, riff one, two, three. You know, so riff one, two, three, four, in. Uh, riff two, two, three, four, in. Um, and 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 do it like that. It'll be different every night. Yeah. And then another way to do it is to give them, okay, you've got uh, 16 bars here, 32 bars here. Here are the chord changes. You guys, you guys play what you want. If you want to play it all together, fine. If, if people want to Dixieland it, go ahead and Dixieland it. Um, and so that'll, be, that'll come off different yeah. every night. We're getting the high sign of this time to go play oh. again. Uh, we've got to... Keep this show Sounds on the good road. To me. So, um, do we cut to B roll again here? No, just go. Just go. Okay. <laughs> just go. <laughs> okay then.
When they come to take you down When they bring that wagon round When they come to call on you And drag your poor body down Just one thing I
Still got to sleep out in the pouring rain One last voice is calling you And I guess it's time to go Cause it's time to go And just one thing I ask of you Just one thing for me
were talking earlier about classical music and how it's kind of uh, on a downswing. And uh, what always happens with any genre is the upswing comes about from new innovation from some artist that comes in and shakes it up. You know? right. And one of the things that you're going to be challenging classical musicians to do is what we're doing right here, which is improvisation. We, right. you, know, you know, It's got to happen. Yeah, it's, you know, it's the next unknown, I think, you know. There are, this is a long, long conversation, and there are, there are technological uh, approaches to doing this. There are more meat and potatoes uh, ways of approaching it like Warren and I are doing. There's a guy who's got uh, a system that you can, uh, whereby you can, well, we'll talk about this next, when we get All on right. the couch. It's, are we harm melodic? <laughs> Who's taking the first verse? I'll take it. Um, no, why, why don't you do the whole tune? Okay, I'll do that. You want to count it? Well, you count it. You count it.
So we're on. We got Trixie, Sunshine, and Carolyn. Hi. Uh, Hi, Bob. The Gar the, you know, the Garcia girls are, you know, a number of them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I got some bullet points. First bullet point is uh, uh, I think we all want to wish Jerry a happy birthday. Yeah. So it's tomorrow, not tonight. And then... We're going to talk about Jerry's new website, or yeah, the the, the new Jerry website. Correct. Oh, I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Technical difficulty. Technical difficulties here. Let's see. Is uh, say something. 
Well, I'm trying to say something, but Bob, you keep interrupting me. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> kind of my job here. Um, is she is she going? Okay, great. Yeah, I'm good. So, you're on. Oh, well, I wanted to I wanted to just say a couple of words about Jerry's birthday. He had a lot of them, but we wish he'd had a few more. Yeah. And um, we certainly this is the time of year to have a lot of reflections about Jerry's life and with the family and so on and it uh, we miss him a lot especially now but uh, we had some we had some really fun times on his birthday but he uh, just about every single time he would have to play a show I mean that was his life he was never happy unless he was doing a gig somewhere oh well, we were always on tour in the summer you yeah know, make hay while the sun shines mm -hmm. and you know, I just remember, I just remember us being apart a lot too in the in the early days, when we were so broke and nobody had any money. But God, times were the times were tough, but times were great. Yeah. You know that, that starving artist business is is pretty much everything it's cracked up to be. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> these days, you you work at the Apple Store, I guess, but. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's the same old deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, my bullet points now. Uh, we're going to talk about oh. the Jerry website. Oh, this beautiful new website. I yeah. know that a, a team of fabulous people have been working on this website for some time and um, have asked the family for input. And um, Nobody you asked know, me. Darn. It's but never it's, never, it's too never too late. I think, I think this is going to be an open door for a while. But I'd like to hear Trixie say more about it because she knows more about it. She's been much more closely involved in it than I have. Uh, it's it's going to be kind of a state of the art website, new technology, new ways for people to geek out about tour schedules, set lists, equipment, and all the things that um, you know make make the fans happy and all their different levels of. Uh, fandom from you know new people to old people so this is very soon we'll be launching this new revamp site and I think everyone's gonna really love it it's been a great work of um, passion and dedication it, it was created by deadheads for deadheads you know and uh, it'll be here very soon you just saw a little clip we're very proud of it and uh, we'll just hold on to your hats because it's coming <laughs> right yeah, we'll, we'll work up uh, if I get involved, we'll probably work up some stuff to, so, you know, mm -hmm. real reminiscent of Angry Birds. And, <laughs> what? <laughs> the weird yeah. portal is in development. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Uh, portal. So this is going to we'll be at, Jerry, sure fun. at jerrygarcia.com. Yeah. And uh, just kind of keep your eye on the website and wait for the, for the good stuff to start happening. Okay, now last year we did a, a show, I think it was... On Jerry, it might have been on Jerry's birthday. Um, it was on August 1st, and it was called the show. It, it, the show was a, a, a cluster. Uh, yeah, one of those. Um, <laughs> we. Uh, I was on the road when when people were uh, being asked to come and play, and of course everybody wanted to come and play the show. And if I had been consulted on this, I would have said, okay, well, we got way too many people, but I wasn't, so we had a show with way too many people. It was called Moving Me Brightly, or no, yeah, Move Me Brightly, there we go, and, uh, but it fell together. It was long. It was five or six hours, and uh, the rehearsals, getting everybody, uh, basically getting, you know, 10 pounds of rats into a five-pound bag. Um, <laughs> It was a lot of work, the rehearsals, and then, we, you know, we were we were rehearsing for a couple of days, and then right up until lights, camera, action, and but we somehow made it through, and there, there were a lot of great folks on the show. Um, I, I I'm not even going to start. Uh, give me a list of the people, and I'll start reading it. But uh, you know, toward the end of this little rave. Because uh, I don't want to leave people out, but um, it it all fell together. We made uh, we recorded it, and we uh, we made a, a, a 
uh, a DVD out of it, and that's coming out, and it's going to benefit the. Uh, it's going to proceeds go to the Garcia estate, and I don't know what you girls are going to do with it, but uh, we, uh, <laughs> we listen to it in the shower. I'm, I assume. You know? Right. Well, you know, but there's video. Right. But the music was. <laughs> but wait. I know wait, it's in the shower. <laughs> no, but the music was fabulous because yeah, we, we were lovely. here. We were here for the whole thing, and it was delightful. And it kept changing. They kept, you know, every song they bring in new people, and it was. We had. We, uh, we met all sorts we had of Mike great Gordon musicians. Gordon on bass. Um, the rhythm section sort of uh, revolved around the the band, the National, as I recall. But uh, I, it's been a long, it's been a while since I right. since I've seen it, and people were coming and going from you know the drum seat from the uh, from bass player would shift out guitarist. We had lots of guitarists, trumpet player I think, and a lot of singers, a lot of singer, uh, songwriter guitarists. That's that that was the night that I met Jonathan Wilson, for instance, who's the greatest thing since canned beer, and. Uh, <laughs> And we had uh, Sean Lennon on there. I'm uh, not Sean Lennon. Um, Harper, um, Simon. Harper Simon on there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Here's a well, Lucas Lucas Nelson. Oh, wait, Lu Lucas Nelson. Lucas. Yeah. He came the day before. Let me see. <laughs> uh, Neil Casal, who was great. Jeff was on. Jeff Comanche. Sam Cohen. Well, Sam Cohen came sort of bundled up with the uh, and, and Craig Finn with the the uh, the national folks and then Donna Jean Gotcha was on there Mike Gordon uh, right. Jonathan Graboff uh, Josh Kaufman Ted Kubler Jim Lauderdale who was yeah. who did a yeah. sterling rendition of yeah. uh, Eyes of the well, World he was great or Jim Lauderdale um, yeah. Adam McDougal Cass McCombs who did a, a wonderful job with uh, uh, what tune did he do? Uh, I just remember him singing and uh, knocking me out. Jason Abr Abrams Roberts, Joe Russo on the dr drums from mm -hmm. time to time, Harper Simon, Chris Thompson, Jonathan Wilson. Uh, Mike Gordon and Phil. Mike Gordon and Phil. And uh, Luke Wilson as the interviewer. Yeah, and it took a while to uh, to to run through all these uh, all these people who sat in. It was a wonderful show, and it's going to be available. Where is it going to be available? Worldwide. Worldwide. Soon. Soon. Okay. <laughs> well, on either of our websites, probably, you'll find, you'll find a way to get it. Anyway. Well, okay, so we're going, out, we're going off half-cocked here, like... As <laughs> usual. <laughs> okay, I'm supposed to ask you, uh -oh. Carolyn. Yes. I'm not used to calling her Carolyn, believe me. Uh, about your favorite birthday with Jerry. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Um, probably the first one, you know, when he finally told me when his birthday was. And I was able to celebrate it with him. Oh, that probably would have been 1967. And wasn't that around the time we got... Busted? Or maybe that was 68. I can't remember. <laughs> I think we got busted 67. 67. So I think things are pretty hairy right around then. But, um, yeah. No cake and candles. There was no cake and candles in those days. <laughs> we, were, we were pretty broke, actually. And um, I don't remember I don't remember celebrating at a high level, but just at a, at a sweet level. Hey, Ashbury was great in those days. I mean, it, well, was it was really it was great, something. Really great the year before the summer of love. Mm -hmm. Before all the riffraff showed up. Before and, the press locked onto it. Mm -hmm. Before we had gray line tours stopping in front of the house and pointing up at us in the windows and talking about us, you know, the hippie tour. We were on the hippie tour. <laughs> okay, now we're uh, also... Um, well, I, you know, we're supposed to talk about the Wolf guitar, which is right oh. over there. But I tell you what, what we're going to do, I think we'll, uh, uh, picture's worth a thousand words, so we'll get to that in a minute. Um, hmm. Girls, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> 
What, you want, what do you want to say? Hey, I just want to thank you for last year's event mm -hmm. that, that is becoming this DVD because it was really a high moment for my whole year. It was beautiful. I really appreciate having been invited and met so many really wonderful Renaissance people. And I'm really proud of you for being a Renaissance man here. <laughs> and you're like to ninth round. <laughs> so Renaissance is my middle name. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. plus, it was like the first really, really big nice. event over here. It was nice. at yeah, it TRI, was. and it was it was massive. It was a huge production Big party. consideration for for you. I mean, we I had been here once before, but that one was mind-bogglingly complex, and it really went off well. And every it sounded so beautiful in here. Yeah. And I think I think people were shedding tears out of the yeah. audience, for, tears of joy, because it was so gorgeous. Yeah. I think the DVD is going to be really nice. I assume so. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna move right smartly onto the uh, we're 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 running way the hell over here. Okay, so, so Wolf, huh? Uh, so we're gonna talk Warren. We're gonna talk about the Wolf guitar a little bit. I think we're gonna move. Uh, we're gonna go to. Uh, we're gonna lose the the opening one and, and go to shake Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's start with the fact that it weighs 14 and a half pounds. Uh, or so I'm told. Uh, again, I, I'm not responsible for anything I say. But um, my Les Paul, which uh, Les Paul is considered a heavy guitar, my Les Paul weighs seven and a half pounds. <laughs> this weighs 14 and a half. Um, but it's got an effects loop built into it. That's why there's two cables here. Uh, you run, I, I borrowed a Mutron for, for the symphony tour to try and get uh, closer to the, the sound that, that he used when, when he was going for that uh, Ottawa effect. And of course this is like coil tap stuff, but it's, it's such a well-balanced guitar, it doesn't feel like 14 and a half pounds. It just really, you know, it just... I don't think it's, it's 14 and a half pounds. But it, it, uh, like I said, I, I I'm making all this up as we go right. along. Uh, <laughs> but um, when I first heard that I was going to be able to, to borrow it, I thought, well, that's, that's amazing. I'll you know, hopefully feel comfortable enough playing it to play it on a few songs. And it showed up at the first day rehearsal in Pittsburgh. And the first thing, when I put it on, I thought, oh, it feels amazing. Plugged it in, sounded amazing. And we started playing with the band, and it just instantly filled up the space that I was trying to fill up. And right. so I just said, well, you know what? I'm just going to play it on every song. Uh, right. And I brought like five guitars. And a chiropractor. Never, never brought them out. Yeah, and a chiropractor. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a really gorgeous, gorgeous instrument, both uh, visually, the way it plays, the way it sounds. Uh, it's just, just a beautiful piece of work. Well, let's play something. Let's do. Industry. This is known as dead air. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. Absolutely not. You know, you guys should have made 
a live yeah. record like a John Cage uh, Pollock kind of live record with no music on it and call it dead air. I told you I was jet lagged. <laughs>
I trash you like a diamond I trash you Of all colors, raise a gold Sing fiddle to a double The waterfall Oh, put my back
Gonna miss you, baby, from Rome.